why uh, network mapping for the blue team, so the defense uh, do research to this, like uh, we are going here, uh, to know its network and to view its user facing the internet, clicking on every download button, extra and doing uh, and that's why we have uh, some uh, some stuff to do. And for the red team attackants, <coughs> we can retrieve information on a given target. We can observe a target over time. That is to say, we scan it, and then a month uh, after we scan it, and uh, we do the difference. And it's a way to find potential allowing geek threats or in a pen test to give uh, a first. Uh, um, a first element to view and then dig in. So yes, keep calm, yes we scan. So the principle is uh, quite easy. We analyze the target to retrieve uh, the most accurate image. To doing this, we use uh, tools like uh, the well-known Nmap. So we send probes, that is to say um, uh, ping or uh, ICMP uh, packets, etc. And we just see what the host responds to us, if it responds, and what, uh, what is his answer. Do we, do we have a HTTP server, FTP server, etc.? And it is uh, Apache, it is uh, Nginx, etc. So we also have to know that we have some biases because uh, I'm making my scan from my arm. Um, maybe my um, my uh, internet provider uh, will uh, just cut some packets, or uh, the target may have a, a firewall. Uh, my IP uh, can be filtered, or the target may, cho may want to show me something that is wrong. And the tool we use, so for instance, uh, Nmap um, by default just scan the top uh, thousand ports uh, that uh, you consider at the most uh, uh, frequency. So these last years, uh, even if uh, I'm very young, but I do know a floppy disk. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> With uh, growing internet capabilities, we can now have um, faster scans and we can now scan the entire internet, an entire country, a whole enterprise very quickly. So that's the good part, but the bad part is that we have a lot of results to analyze. And contrary to other countries, we can have many people to do this, but we have many cores. So we really use these cores instead of these people. First, we need to have this data, so we don't want to get them, to parse them, that's the hard part, and uh, we're too full for this. So there are tools to deal with. So for instance, there are scans.io, it's a very good go uh, source of data, but we want to use our own. Then there's the well-known Shodan, with a, a very good API, a nice looking interface, but we don't want our results in the cloud. Then you have Zumai, if you know. This is the Chinese version of Shodan, of course. Of course, there is one. And Quark's Lab IV, but it's private. Uh, and uh, thanks to Snowden, there is the GCHQ Agenda X UK top secret. And finally, we come to Ivre, <laughs> drunk in English, uh, which is uh, open source, uh, developed uh, also uh, by uh, Al colleague. And uh, it's, the, um, it's the one we really use. So the sample we will use today, and that you can use too, uh, is the, a worldwide Modbus scan. That is to say, uh, Modbus is a kind of um, control and command protocol for SCADA. And uh, this is um, a scan of uh, the whole internet, and uh, keeping uh, uh, the whole uh, routable internet, keeping all the, only the, um, the targets uh, responding to our probes with a look like a Modbus uh, service. And if you want to reproduce this, uh, this result, you can get the, the sample here. So um, the agenda for today, you just uh, quickly introduce uh, Avo and uh, manually digging. Then he, work, uh, then he will talk about the hard stuff, uh, mathematics, and all this magic. And uh, we go back to results. So uh, Avo, this stands for Instrument de Veille sur les réseaux extérieurs. And the, the bench line is Avo Scan Internet. That's for French. Um, there is also the name in English, which is Drank, for digital recognition of and of network, of course. <laughs> um, it's managed passive and active, but we will just uh, focus on the active part. And uh, it uses uh, common technologies. 
Um, so, for instance, uh, directly, you, you can say, okay, let's scan a country, for instance, the Albania, um, just 1,000 uh, hosts. Then, once the scan has been done, uh, get the results into our da da database and get, uh, and, uh, please uh, parse these results. So, uh, here, this is sample host. Um, with, uh, and it's look like what, um, what Nmap give you. Uh, you have uh, the, the result of uh, host scripts and uh, for each open port, uh, the um, corresponding uh, service script. And that's what you will use. So you just uh, write an API, uh, API just uh, say, okay, I want uh, only the in this autonomous system, I just want uh, this, uh, the host with this port and this port, give me them, and then we will work on this. And we don't have to manage the uh, getting and passing data. So. What about manually digging? This is what we have done um, until uh, today. So, yeah, um, this is the uh, web interface. This is just for chatting. Um, <coughs> so, um, here, we, here we are only, uh, we only have the Modbus uh, scan and um, only us with uh, at least one open port. So the first thing we can do, look for is the address space. So. I don't know if you see it. It is um, a representation, a graphics of um, on the first axis the EV uh, bytes, and the, on the second axis you have only the last byte. And the colors correspond to uh, the number of ports opened. So you can see that even it's um, a scan on a, a slash zero, um, the repartition is not a, a problem. <laughs> Equally reported. That's the one. Uh, so, um, for instance, uh, we, can, we can look for uh, the map repartition, and uh, here we are. There is no uh, this equally uh, repartition. Um, the main targets are located in the Europe and the United States. In the United States, um, <coughs> uh, uh, let's do a no. Uh, let's do a, yeah, Let's look for a country in Europe and remap. And you can see that mainly, oh, there is people here, maybe. Um, okay, so um, let's go back to the world world and look for top ports. Remember, we have our bias. It's that we only have scan the Modbus uh, device. So, of course, every, um, every sample, every host has the, has, uh, the Modbus uh, port open. But actually, it's not uh, relevant information. This is, uh, it is our bias. Then maybe look for top uh, autonomous system. Um, well, forget about us, not autonomous system. I don't want to talk about our range. So maybe uh, top country. And as usual, the United States are uh, at the top, but the Turkey is uh, um, at the second place, which is very unusual. If we use a random scan on the internet, and uh, we do the same, that's what the curve um, looks like usually. So United States, then China, then Korea, then Germany, etc. So back to uh, our Modbus scan. If we focus on the Turkey, um, we can now maybe uh, look for a um, uh, service that are not uh, very frequent, the top bottom service, and uh, maybe, I don't know if you know, end top HTTP. I don't know what it is. Uh, so we have only one in the, the whole Turkey that have these uh, services. Um, well, I don't know what it is, but I think it's it's very good. And but it's more as safe, so we don't we don't look. Okay, let's go back to the slide. So that's what we can have uh, by just uh, manually digging. So we can quickly find some interesting results. There are uh, interesting results to to find, but. It mostly relies on the analyzer uh, knowledge, and this is a human bias. Um, so, and uh, I don't know if you have seen, but there is uh, 10,000 of um, of targets so uh, of us to see. So it can be very time-consuming to look for. And what we want, it's maybe an automatic grouping of similar hosts. That is to say, if I look for a host which is a web server with common uh, host with common service and common products. I don't want to um, have to do the same for every 
uh, a web server which looks like it. So a first uh, part can be to automatic group similar host. So we just have to look for each one of them, each of of, um, of each group, one of each group. And a second uh, wish can be to have a, a way of uh, highlight uh, uncommon host. That's to say, products that are very different, host that are very different from the, each other. And machine learning via clustering anomaly detection can answer that. So that's why, uh, that's why uh, Xavier will talk about. Okay, so um, at the beginning of my stage, uh, I didn't know anything about machine learning. Uh, the only thing that I thought is uh, the machine learning was more about the picture on the left. Actually, it's more about the picture on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is machine learning? It's a field derived from the pattern recognition and artificial intelligence. It's uh, closely related to uh, computational statistics, but hopefully for us, the smart guys, the smart mathematicians, have already done the work, the hard work. They have made a lot of papers, and um, mostly all of the algorithms that we will need are already implemented for your language. So we just have to uh, use this algorithm and just pick the right one and use it correctly. Um, machine learning can be divided in two main categories. Uh, that's not exhaustive, but that's uh, the main categories. The first one is supervised learning. So basically, it's when you, for instance, you have an algorithm that will try to recon some picture you give to it. Uh, so in the first stage, you will give him a picture of a cow. You say that this is a cow. Uh, the algorithm will learn. Then you give it another picture, for instance, a beer, and you say that you can drink it. This is a beer. And in the second stage, you give him a new picture, and you ask, what is it? Is it a cow? Is it a beer? So this is great. But sadly, it does not fit to our needs, because we have a lot of scan, a lot of uh, machine that we have. And if we, if we would like to use a supervised machine learning algorithm, then we would have to uh, manually hand, uh, label all our hosts. So consider if you have 10,000 hosts, it will be really time consuming. And we are lazy. We don't want to do that. And the second thing is by doing this, you will um, introduce bias. That is to say that uh, you will tell the algorithm this should be considered as a printer, this should be considered as a web server. And if you do that, you lose the, the great thing about machine learning and um, trying the, the algorithm to find by himself what, uh, what it is. So we use the uh, second categories, which is uh, unsupervised machine le learning algorithm. It's, um, really much the same thing, just you don't have to set the label first. So the algorithm will try to, to find it by himself, and sometimes it will even tr find something that you, uh, the human eye would not have seen by himself. So it can find hidden patterns, and that's something that really interested. So remember, we have two things, three things that we want to do, to be able to do. The first one is grouping hosts by similarities, because we don't want to analyze every host in the database. Uh, we just want to analyze group of hosts, like this one, and I know uh, all other hosts in the same group are kind of the same, so we don't have to do the, the work uh, 10,000 times. So that's done by the clustering algorithm. The second thing is emphasizing uncommon hosts or anomalies, and possibly uh, something weird is happening. So it is an uh, anomaly detection algorithm. And the third thing you, you would like to do is representing the results, because um, as Camille said, we just do the scanning with Nmap, and if you uh, just put uh, normal parameters to Nmap, it will scan the thousand most common ports according to Nmap. So we will have a thousand dimension vector space, and we can't represent that uh, in two or three dimension uh, easily. And that's what principal component analysis is for, because if you can uh, represent the data, is, it is more easy for you to understand what the scan is. So we have two problems. Oh, yeah. the, the first one is that what we have is scan result, and map result, as we, we showed before. And what the algorithm that are actually already written want in input are matrices. So the hard work is uh, how to trans transmute the uh, scan results into uh, algorithm matrices. So that's doing that. Um, the difficult part is to do that uh, relevantly. So we had several approaches for that. Um, we can say experimental or incremental if you're optimist. 
The first one is a binary solution um, that was encouraging, but with patchy results, it can be improved. So what it is, is you take a host uh, that your scan result have given to you, and you look at the thousand most common port that Nmap tells you. Uh, the, uh, Nmaps will tell you the state, those products, uh, what is on it, uh, is it an open SSH uh, server. You just look, is it open or is it closed? And if it's open, you put a one. If it's closed, you put a zero, like this. So it gives, it gives good results. Uh, the, the servers are grouping together. The, um, the, there is some anomaly that will appear. But sadly, you can't do something, consider this, if you have the host number one who is normal with on the port 22 uh, open SSH server and port uh, 80 an Apache server. But the second host is more weird because on the port 22 there is not a SSH server, it's a map daemon. Uh, this is really weird, but if you consider the fact that we will put a one if it's open and a zero if it's closed, the two hosts are exactly the same for our algorithm and we won't spot this uh, abnormality. So what we did was uh, trying with frequency solution. Uh, it's uh, basically you will be uh, beyond your scan, beyond your um, your wall scan. You you'll just check the um, frequency of operation of uh, one service like OpenSSH. So it will be really common on the board 22. And when you have one host with a NIBAP daemon wor working on the on the port 22, this is really uncommon. So if you put the frequency, this is what you get. I put uh, 0 0.99 uh, for the TCP one because most of the time the port is closed. And if one time one host had this port open, it, this will be really uncommon. So the algorithm will, will find uh, that this is uncommon and will uh, um, highlight this. So um, we speak about the three algorithms we used. The first one that I will speak about is the principal component analysis. It's about uh, representing data which are in uh, high dimension space, two, uh, two or three dimension space for, for our case. And while doing that, we'll try to keep the relevant information. So what is uh, what that, uh, uh, what interests us. Uh, so here you have a um, sample in two dimension, and you can see that the relevant part of information or the variance is um, gathered in one dimension. So there is two axes. The length of the axe represents the quantity of information you get. So if you do the projection of the on the first axis, you will lose about 5% of information, but you will divide the dimension by two. And doing that, you can uh, print in a relevant way data in a high dimension. So this can be used on a real, real world example. So this um, is a, a study about what the people in England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales will usually drink and eat. There is 17 pointer, so 17 dimension. And if you look just like this in the in the tabular, you won't see a relevant thing or you won't see a, a real uh, trend for one country to be really different from one or another. But if you do the PCA on those data, here what you get, that's in one dimension. So clearly the Northern Ireland seems to be different, really different from Wales, England and Scotland. If you do that in two dimension, you lose a bit less information and you have the same, un same result that the Northern Ireland seems to be different. If we go back to uh, the real data, we can see that, for instance, um, Northern Irish people eat way less fruit than uh, the others, but they eat way more fresh potatoes and uh, I think they drink a bit less also. So that uh, what the PCA found uh, relevant and decided to show us in the in the representation. And for th those of you who are as bad at geography as I am, uh, just remember that the Northern Ireland is the only one that is not on the British island, so it may be related. Uh, we will do a quick uh, overview of this. So we've got a tool uh, which is uh, Analyzer Cli. So we say that we want the Modbus scan. We limit to a thousand hosts to be a bit quicker, and we want only hosts with a zero to ten port open. So we have thousand hosts, and we plot that in two dimension. Here's what you get. So, OK. 
Okay, so on the right, uh, if you can see, there is the decomposition uh, of the axis. It means what the axis actually represents. Uh, so for the first axis, the x-axis, you see that the port 23, 21, and 22, so Telnet, OpenSSH, uh, and uh, SFTP, are the, um, the ports that are actually matters for the first dimensions. If we get back on the representation, you can see that there seems to be three cluster from left to right, and that probably represent host with OpenSSH, uh, SFTP, and uh, Telnet. And that's the same story for the second dimension with uh, port uh, 4043 and 22. So servers with uh, HTTPS and uh, OpenSSH, or SSH, actually. OK, so get back. Yeah, we can plot the same thing in three dimension, and we'll see that there is one more information that is given for the third dimension. Here, uh, clearly, this is the um, the machine that have the port eighty eighty responding to the probes, and if we plot in three dimension, we will see that it will uh, split those hosts in two groups: those who have something running on the port eighty eighty and those who have not. So um, the third dimension actually brings something new, uh, new information that you lose when you do the PCA in two dimension. And so that's really uh, useful for printing data and um, getting the point of view of what is actually uh, running on the scan. But the algorithm we, we do, they, uh, they will run on, uh, on the high dimensional vector space, so they won't lose information that the PCA will uh, get you lose, lost. So the second algorithm we will speak about is the clustering algorithm. Uh, so it's about grouping elements by similarities. Uh, like I said, if you have a thousand servers that are actually really close from each other, you don't want to um, spend much time on working on a thousand web server. You just want to get one, see what it is, and then pass to the another, another group. So this could be easily done by um, a human if the, um, if the data were uh, easily represented in two dimension or three dimension, because you just have to make cluster by, uh, by yourself. But because we work in a high vector space, uh, the clustering algorithm works well and better than I. Um, here's an example. Um, so we'll take 64 dimension to represent a number. Uh, so the number is uh, on the top, uh, uh, on the bottom right corner. Uh, so 64 dimension, that's actually 64 pixel. And one pixel can take 256 possible values. Uh, so it's a grayscale. You put them together, you get a, a number. So that's one sample. And if you take several samples, like this, and you give it to a clustering algorithm. We took a Kamin algorithm for, for this uh, example. You ask him to make 10 cluster. And then you ask, what is a cluster? So by what is a cluster, I mean, uh, give me the representation of a cluster, or give me the mean of a cluster. So it will give you a matrix. And this matrix, you do exactly the same. So you, you, you take uh, the number in the matrix as pixel. You put the pixel together, and that's, you, uh, that's your image. And so that is what the algorithm tell you. So you can you can actually uh, get your numbers uh, by that. So um, we use Kamins for uh, so Kamins was the algorithm we just show. Uh, we used it for uh, our tool uh, because it scales well in high dimension. It is uh, easily parallelizable. And we also uh, yeah we will do a quick no special. Okay, so with Kamin, you have to tell how many cluster you want. So uh, Kamin will just add, uh, I don't know, three, four cluster. Three, four cluster. Okay. Then we run the algorithm, and it will try to um, to lower as much as it can the um, the mean between the centroid and all the other dots in the cluster. You see that it will uh, tends to uh, a stable stable. Uh, uh, Stable, <laughs> um, but that's not really uh, convincing. This is not what we would like to do. So there is another algorithm we we use, uh, which is dbscan. Um, it's closer to what the human eye would do because it's based on density uh, on density, and uh, on one other um, advantage of that 
dbscan algorithm is that it can detect outliers. So we'll make a quick overview of the algorithm. Okay. So basically there is two parameters that you can give to this, uh, which is the length between two samples to be considered as close to, from each other, and how many dots, how many samples you want to be a group. So here uh, the length is the one, and the min points for, um, for a group to be considered as a group is four. So if you have three, three points, three uh, samples somewhere in the corner, they won't be considered as a group, and it will be anomalies. Okay, so this works better, and normally you will have new cluster for the eye and for the, the mouse. Okay. So we'll show this. Okay. So maybe you can do a k means algorithm. So we cluster the host with, uh, okay, mm, three, maybe three, because we had. Um, like three cluster uh, when we wash it together well, um, previously. Okay, so we can plot the this in two dimension. Okay, so as you can see, um, it's a bit um, melted. Um, maybe it's because we lose information by plotting this in two dimension, and if we do that in three dimension, maybe we will be able to see uh, why the algorithm picks those points. It's a bit clearer now. You can see that the third dimension actually uh, was counting, and that's uh, what the algorithm took. Okay. Okay. So the last um, the last algorithm we will speak about is the anomaly detection. Um, why anomaly? Because anomaly is not something that is far from mean. Here you have a, a picture where the anomaly is exactly the mean. So um, we just cannot take all the points and say, okay, what, what is the point which is uh, the farther from the, from the mean, and this is an anomaly. No, it's not uh, that simpler. Um, so there is basically two kind of approaches. The one with you consider uh, that your data are Gaussian reported, but we cannot make this assumption. And the other one is the, the uh, one class support vector machine, at least that is the one we choose to use in, uh, in the work. Uh, yeah, we have to provide the animal portion for, for that to work. Um, this is effective in large dimension vector space. And okay, so we'll uh, w show you how it works still on our tool. Okay, so we have a thousand hosts, and we want to uh, search anomaly. So he's searching the ten most uncommon hosts. And that's what we get. We will get back to the web view to analyze uh, further in detail, in detail those, um, those anomalies. So as you can see on the top left, we have 10 results selected. That's our 10 anomalies. And if you look closely to one anomalies, you'll see that something weird is happening. Like uh, the ports that are open are not the port that uh, real machine or at least a standard machine will would have okay okay let uh, Camille take the rest <coughs> okay so um some creature results um so um do it in? Yeah. okay uh so just uh, going uh, back and forth uh, from the um, the uh, the web uh, ui and um, and the uh, analyzer client um, so just uh, beginning with uh, a manual digging of uh, an expert. Thank you, Xavier. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's go with, uh, for instance, a scan of uh, a, co a Latin country, but uh, with a lot of bank, that is to say Luxembourg. No, Luxembourg. Like uh, Luxembourg. <coughs> okay, so um, maybe the address space. Okay, that, that's uh, okay. So um, maybe I start with um, another one. Maybe um, let's go with the random scanner instead of Luxembourg. Too many points. <coughs> Demo effect, of course. Entry. No. No. <laughs> Just okay. 
Thank you. <laughs> Demo effect, of course. <laughs> it always happens. So. Oh, please, please. Not the time. <laughs> That's the mode porn. <coughs> porn mode, sorry. Okay, so. Uh, yes, yes, I do know. <coughs> okay, so, uh, <laughs> the IP addresses. Um, there is a, a band that is, seems to not be used, so let's select it. Yep, and now uh, we can go to the analyzer key with this filter and just look for what's happening in this range of IP. Uh, okay, so that was sh my shell. <coughs> you take your time. <laughs> okay, so um, plot in 2D. Mentioned, yes. So, well, we have, um, if you look for points, um, there is two points that are very, very um, um, uncommon and a, a big pack. So let's uh, just do um, a clustering in a two dimension. And count. So on one cluster, we just have one guy, and the, the other one in the cluster uh, zero. So let's select this guy and uh, see what it looks like. And white list is very uncommon. And this is because he got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of pore open, of open pore. So <coughs> actually, this is uh, what we have seen as maybe trivial only parts, because um, this host seems to just respond with a random value, which is uh, sometimes uh, open, sometimes closed, but it's just uh, a lot of time to consider it. So if we take um, a bigger scan, just so uh, the whole random scan, just, no, what? Uh, in the analyzer click, please. <coughs> And so, uh, go, go back, yeah, and, no, what, what is he doing? <laughs> okay, um, so, uh, uh, plot in two dimension again, but there is uh, more host now, about 10,000. And what we do have is a um, pack, of us like before, and a lot of points um, that are not in this pack. And if we, uh, um, like before, we just do uh, our uh, k-means clustering uh, quickly, maybe in, uh, for two, two elements, we'll, uh, do, uh, we'll uh, want to, we want to just eliminate these host because they are not interesting. And if we remove them, we, when we plot again, we go back to a common uh, plot, uh, plot uh, yes, we have a common graphics, which is very more interesting, and uh, we do not lose our time on these uh, trivial only parts. So, uh, last example, uh, which is one is on uh, Luxembourg. So, go in the web interface maybe, and let's start with uh, the category Luxembourg. And we are looking for targeting an autonomous system. So let's see uh, um, what are the uh, existing autonomous system. So maybe the foundation rest now, because there are not too many asked. And now we'll do on it um, maybe a DB scan, a DB scan algorithm. So go back and forth. Yes, use the filter. Use the shell, <coughs> and so, yep. So remember, the DB scan is the second algorithm, the the one which um, 
is doing his stuff like the humanize, and he has an uh, advantage that he uh, already um, he also um, comes with uh, an anomaly detection. So just select a cluster. So for instance, the the, the eight. <laughs> Actually, this uh, the uh, this is not deterministic. So <laughs> okay. <coughs> So I'm not sure of what we will found, but um, the uh, the idea is that um, it detects um, around uh, 20 categories. So frame, we just have to look to each category, and then to the noise. So here we may have the yeah the um, the host with the uh, 80 80 port open, and uh, maybe a HTTP server on it. So if we uh, look for a second uh, cluster. Back on the analyzer clear, so maybe the nine. We'll have uh, another category uh, with a different host. And this time, this is, I don't know. Maybe we have them, maybe not. You take your time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so this time, it seems to be the the uh, the host with the uh, 22 and 25 open. Okay, so um, we can now. So now we have uh, a, a, we have we have uh, several categories. We have to look just for one of each, and we have noise or outlier or anomaly. So just select the anomaly. Here, this is the noise, I think. So we have uh, around the uh, thousand of it. And yes, please. <coughs> and up, it will not crash my <laughs> browser <laughs> or my assistant. <laughs> if you crash, you have to yourself as a weapon. Yeah. The Lassiter Treaty. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what we got here, we have several hosts which are all different. And looking for this one, maybe, what we got, the AOL server HTTPD. I don't know if you know it. <laughs> and uh, maybe if you look for um, um, for products on, um, let's say, the HTTPS port, top product, yeah. Right. And so may you know Fritzbox HTTP config? I do not know. Um, so what we have here, several asked. Um, oh, one with the webcam, yeah. So if this uh, if this is what you what you look what you are looking for, here is a map of all webcam that I know in the world. <laughs> so well, the back to uh, our slide. So um, these are just uh, results on the internet, and um, you can do the same inside an enterprise. But the results are quite different. Uh, why? Because in a, in a film, um, hosts are uh, tends to be more homogeneous. Uh, because of policy inside the firm, and so for instance, you, you can have a address attribution policy uh, with uh, some sub networks which are reserved just for workstation, other one just for servers, and uh, maybe a uh, uh, given a byte it's just for routers. So when you have an anomaly, it's it might be very uh, worse. You can you don't have um, your um, the classic, uh, you you have a server or workstation which is different from what we have in the whole enterprise. So this is not normal. This is maybe the hacker which is already here. So what we got, what we can have come uh, like um, as a group, uh, we can have workstations, of course, printers, production servers, proxies, and what we have as anomalies can have a client lost inside inside the server sub network. So with maybe uh, privilege on the, its uh, firewall rules, and maybe an interesting point, point um, host to hack maybe uh, a server which are not using, which is not using your, uh, I don't know uh, what to mean, uh, door uh, appliance. And so, if you want to see enterprise results, do not hesitate. Give us an internal access, and we can freely scan your company. But you may keep the results. So, as a conclusion, um, why hunting uh, our approach uh, during hunting uh, through machine learning is okay, let the cores do the, the big part, the bulk of the analysis, and let the expert deal with details. So, it's 
a way to be able to quickly parse a large number of hosts. Uh, here we are, um, uh, a um, thousand of hundred of uh, hosts, hundred of thousand, um, <coughs> and uh, you just re uh, just a um, limited comprehension is required. You just have to know what the PCA is doing or just why uh, it can give you that the it is interesting uh, that the, uh, the HTTP port. Uh, 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 that uh, he prints the HTTP port on the first axis, and why he don't uh, print the Modbus port. If you um, if you remember for the Modbus scan, the Modbus scan, the Modbus port is open on every host, so it is not present. It is not relevant to keep it. So uh, when you're using the PCA, it will not show. Um, it will not uh, give him a, a weight. So the results are quite promising, and during the future work, we are not. Um, machine learning guru, so we have done a lot of errors. We are keen, keep looking for a better algorithm, better uh, modeling, and maybe an enhanced visualization. Maybe uh, we don't we don't want to have to go uh, through the analytically and the web interface, of course, because it can crash your. <coughs> and uh, maybe it will be interesting to, for instance, use the address space and as a color the. Um, the uh, cluster that you have. So if you have a client which is loose in the server uh, address space, we will just see it directly because you will have a red point uh, which is loose inside blue points. And we are looking also for scan diff. That is to say you, you do several scans or just two. And using the, model, uh, the, modelization, the modelization that you already have, just diffing between the two hosts and uh, we don't care about the time which has changed, but maybe if a, a port has been open or has uh, disappeared, that can be uh, really interesting. So thank you for your attention, and may you have questions. Uh, thank you. In the k-means algorithm, you need to give the number of clusters. If you uh, take your data, you construct a graph, you could use an um, algorithm to compute communities, which does, does not need to know how many communities you have, like Louvain algorithm. Can, can you do this? Um, actually, you also have the DB scan, which do, do not uh, need a number of clusters. Yeah, but it's expensive. Uh, yeah, but it's very expensive to do. And in Kamins, you have some methods like the, I think, the elbow method, where you use, uh, you try with uh, three, three clusters, then four, then five extra, and uh, you check the variance of the distance. So I, I don't mm. understand any of this, but. <coughs> right, but the, the Louva algorithm is uh, okay. quite linear. It's very fast. I've tried it on graphs with uh, hundreds of millions of nodes. It's very fast. Okay. You just need a, a graph, and you have a graph uh, with your data. Like I said, we are not a machine learning guru, so I'm not machine le learning, but I yeah. I try. So let's try it. Yeah, of course we can. Thank we you. can do it. Thank you. Yeah. So it just. Um, I will not do this now, Matt. <laughs> so you said that you use Enma for scanning uh, scanning uh, the interior internet, but is it really? Uh, use, fin, I mean, um, and map is not that fast. Is not mean for scanning the internet, uh, the entire internet, because you have things like um, jumping between kernel space and user space. So you you waste time uh, getting packets and parsing them. So yeah, yeah. Actually, you can use uh, a pre-scan uh, like a ZMap, which is the, which is uh, uh, which has been made to be uh, very fast. So uh, for the Modbus scan, you just run a, a ZMap uh, scan uh, 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 asking for every uh, Modbus port open uh, on the in the whole world, and then you go with your ZMap scanner checking for the for each host. So ZMap so is using a, a custom uh, TCP/IP network stack, or uh, does it use uh, the kernel space? Um, I, <laughs> I am not. Um, it's forging, so. <laughs> it's, it's okay, okay, okay. Uh, and um, do you know about Mascan, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that okay, so that's so map okay, or so Mascan, so 
Yes, I, 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 as I said before, uh, we are not doing the scan. Okay. We're just taking the sample and, to and okay. trying our result on it. Good question. Anybody else? Yes, just a question. Thank you for this presentation. Uh, you have based your, um, your cluster computation based on open ports. Uh, can we consider to have um, uh, other inputs like uh, trace root results or host name or other inputs to compute the, the clusters? Yes, definitely. You can uh, add a lot of uh, new information in the database. I don't know if you hear me. Um, the most information you give, the more uh, accurate the result you will have. But you still have to um, remember that it's dangerous to add some information. Because if you consider yourself that this information is relevant, then you will change uh, the way the algorithm behaves. So we'll have to, to try, uh, watch if it's relevant and the results are OK for you. And then you, you implement it and you add the this you can do with the IP address, uh, you can do a lot of stuff. Actually, for the enterprise results, uh, if you, uh, you may want to take in account the IP address, for instance, to find a client lost inside the server. What we do not do on a random scan on the internet because it's nonsense. <laughs>